All right, today's lesson is a continuation on trigonometry, but today we're going to be doing some multi-step trig problems that are about the same difficulty as solving, maybe a little easier in my opinion. Uh, the key thing is you see some triangles kind of stuck together, and you've got to realize that both of these are split, and on each side we're going to have a right angle. That means we have two right triangles. So this one on the right is a right triangle, and this one on the left is a right triangle. You should remember that you can use trig to find missing pieces on right triangles. We can also use Pythagorean theorem, and we can also use special right triangles, uh, their formulas, only when we have 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90. These are not special triangles, though. You can see that some of these are not, oh, this one might be a special right triangle, so we might be able to use our formula there. Down here, are these special right triangles? Nope. Look at their angles. Not special right triangles. So once again, we're going to focus up here. We're going to look at one triangle at a time, and the goal is to find x. There's some nice little directions up here. It says find x, use your intermediate values rounded to the nearest tenth, and then round your round your final answer to the nearest tenth. So this problem deals with rounding to the tenth a whole lot. First thing you've got to realize is you can't just solve for x right off the bat because this triangle over here doesn't give you two values that you can use. It only gives you one value. It only gives you one number. So you can't solve for x right off the bat. What you have to do is focus on the triangle right beside it. So we've got to focus on this triangle. And try to solve for a piece, connect it over here, and then we can solve for x in the next step. So what piece on this green triangle should we try to solve for? Not angles. Angles won't help us on this one. The line they share. This piece, and we'll call it y in this case. So focus on this green triangle. If you have that triangle right there, you can transfer it over here. You don't have to do this part. But this angle would be 55. We'd have a right angle here. Our y is across from it, and the 48 is right next to it. Now, I said some key words there to help you think about labeling. Whenever you're labeling and you're going to try to use trig, how do I label that 48? Uh, this is your adjacent side. Good. How do you label the y side? Opposite. Are we going to use this other piece? No, so I don't need to label it, although we know it's the hypotenuse. I only want trig that deals with opposite and adjacent. You may remember what trig? Yes, that's tangent. So you got to have these memorized. Tangent, and when they give you an angle, you plug it in. So this is tangent of 55 degrees. And then we can write the ratio for tangent. Once again, its ratio is opposite over adjacent, so that will be y over 48. Now, one thing I want you to realize is we're not going to round tangent 55 and then multiply what we're going to do is we're going to look at this and think algebraically. And we're going to do a cross, the easy cross first. So y times 1 is just y. And now we can do the other cross, tan 55, tangent of 55, and multiply by 48. If you do that straight in the calculator, you can use that rounded to a tenth. And what do we get? 68.6. And so hopefully that's rounded correctly. But do we have the answer that we want? No. What do we need to do next? We need to solve for y. So now we're going to focus on this triangle on the right. We just found that that right triangle can be pulled out over here. And you can say the piece we just found was 68.6. I don't need this one and this other one over here is our x, and up here is 25 degrees. What trig, okay, so real quick, how do you label this piece? Yeah, that's our hypotenuse. This is our adjacent. You should remember, hypotenuse adjacent, that's cosine. We always put the angle in if we know it, and then we can write its ratio. So that's going to be 68.6 over x. This one's solving a little different. Earlier when we had the easy cross, it was just y. 
But this time we actually have a number. So 68.6 times 1 is just that number. After you do one cross, you write equals. And then you can write down the other cross. What's my other cross? Cosine, Cosine of 25 degrees times x. Now some people will have a little trouble here figuring out how to get x alone. Remember the x term. What is it doing with cosine? Yeah, right now it's multiplying, and the opposite operation would be to divide by that cosine term, which is actually pretty easy to do on the calculator. So if we divide by cosine of 25 on each side, we'll cancel on this side, but this side will actually give us our answer. 68.6 .6 divided by cosine 25 70, what? Round to the nearest tenth. 75.7. It didn't give us any units, so we can just stop there. Number 11 is a little bit different. However, the same little procedure applies. We're trying to get x. Right now, we don't have enough information over here. So we've got to use information on this triangle to label here and then find x. So once again, we're breaking up the two triangles. We'll focus on the left one first. Sometimes it helps to draw it out to the side. Sometimes it doesn't. The key thing, we want to find this piece. We'll call it y. So y is our opposite piece, and 46 is our hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse. What trig is that? Sine of 60. And notice, you could use a special right triangle formula here because you have a 30, 60, 90. That's completely fine. Some people don't remember those, though, so trig is a good option. So opposite goes on top. Hypotenuse goes below it. Put it over 1 to cross multiply. This is one of the nice ones. Y times 1 is just Y. The other side is going to be sine 60, close parentheses, times 46. And what do you get there? All right, so we get 39.8. All right. Now, that gives me that piece. Now I know two numbers on this triangle, so I can find my x term. So real quick, this x is across from the angle, so that's opposite. And this y is right next to it, so that's my adjacent. Opposite and adjacent, that's tangent of the angle. Once again, opposite over adjacent. Remember, we found y, though, so 39.8. Now we're going to cross-multiply. This is one of the easy ones. x times 1 is x. The other side is tangent of 52, close parentheses, times 39.8. And what do we get? The last thing we need to be able to do is some word problems. So here's some to practice. Uh, this first one says, a boy is flying a kite and lets out 300 feet of string, which makes an angle of 38 degrees of the ground. Assuming that the string is straight, how high above the ground is the kite? So what you need to be able to do is draw a picture. So here's a good start. A boy is flying a kite and lets out 300 feet. We'll just say the boy is uh, down here. So he's down here. He's flying a kite. He lets out 300 feet of string to fly his kite. It makes a 38 degree angle with the ground. Remember, this is in feet. This is in degrees. Assuming that the string is straight, how high above the ground is the height? So this is a picture that you should be able to generate from those sentences given. And then you should be able to solve for h. Go ahead and try that. All right, so when solving for this, you've got to figure out which trig to use. That's why you'd label. So here's our angle. This is across from it, so h is the opposite side. This is right next to it, so that's our hypotenuse. Don't let the h confuse you over here. Just think about the labels. So which one deals with hypotenuse and opposite? That's sine. Remember, it's so... Toa. So O and H right there is sine, definitely. So sine of 38 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. 
and then you should be able to cross multiply from there. H times 1 is H. The other side is sine 38, close parentheses, times 300, and what do you get? 184.698 feet. And we wrote, rounded to three decimal places because it tell, didn't tell us how to round. Three places is usually pretty good rule of thumb. Right, here we go. Number six is a little bit different. It says, Henry's flying a kite. The kite string makes an angle of 43 degrees with the ground. If Henry, Henry is standing 100 feet from a point on the ground directly below the kite, find the length of the kite string. So let's read through that again. Henry's flying a kite, so you've got to get this in vision. It's going to look like this. Say Henry's right here. He's flying a kite, goes up to here. It makes a 43 degree angle with the ground. If Henry is standing 100 feet, he's standing right here, it's 100 feet from a point on the ground. Well, here's the point on the ground. He's standing 100 feet from that point that is directly below the kite. You can see that, directly below the kite. Find the length of the kite string. We'll call the kite string L or something, S, string. So which trig should we use here? This is adjacent, and this is hypotenuse. All right, adjacent hypotenuse is cosine of 43 degrees. Once again, adjacent, which is 100 over our unknown. 100 times 1 is easy. Cosine of 43 times our variable. Divide by cosine of 43. So, real quick, to find S, you type in 100 divided by cosine 43. Give me three decimal places. What do you get? Feet. Make sure to have those units so you get full credit. There you go. Yep. 